The tapestries in the staterooms were made in the Mortlake factory in the early 17th century and then acquired about 50, 60 years later. Originally a tapestry, it was your absolute statement of wealth and power. The workshops were controlled by the crown. If you were in favour, you might be given a tapestry by the king. And if you fell out of favour, he would take those tapestries off your wall and put them somewhere else. And that might mean you're about to have your head chopped off. The world's greatest collectors are not only defined by great wealth. Sotheby's takes you inside Chatsworth House the ancestral home of the Duke and Duchess of Devonshire. Discover the passion that has driven 16 generations of the Cavendish family to create one of the world's most extraordinary art collections. The Mortlake tapestries in the state rooms portray stories from the Acts of the Apostles. Beautifully designed, character faces, fierce men, sort of whispering women, a bull about to be slaughtered. They're a painting in thread. They were highly valued in the 16th, 17th century, partly because they were expensive and partly because they were beautiful, but also they made the rooms warmer. They were star items that when hung on the wall of your residence, and they're huge, wonderfully gave the impression of how wealthy the owner of them was. And so that was what the court collected. So they were a fashionable thing to collect because the royal family then set the fashion. King Charles I was one of the greatest collectors in this country, and it was he who set up the Mortlake Tapestry Workshop. Mortlake were some of the best weavers in the world. They were right up there competing with the French and the Flemish. I mean, there's lots of stories with Mortlake about how they coaxed in Flemish weavers who were the best in the world, and they hid them in barrels and smuggled them in and bribed them because they were so skilled. The Mortlakes that we have here are from a set known as the Acts of Apostles, designed by Raphael. Mixing one of the greats of the Renaissance style and a draftsman of that calibre with the skill of the weavers, you get extraordinary depth in those tapestries. The Mortlake tapestries were put into frames by the Victorian Duke, the sixth Duke, and so it's been very difficult to look after them. They so were in very poor condition. Uh, they were very, very dirty and they were sagging, so they've been sort of rescued. It's been a very long, very exciting project. They've needed doing for a long time. The conservation has been a joy, actually. You think you're just doing a straightforward conservation job, but behind that you keep on discovering more. The conservator phoned me up in a state of shock saying that she'd found some chocolate wrappers stuck between the hessian lining and the tapestry. And she was saying, are you sure these haven't been down and they haven't been touched? And we had no record of them being removed. I went to the Cadbury Museum. I got the wrappers dated, their early war. During the Second World War, Penrose College came here to stay as a girls' school and the staterooms were made into dormitories, one of which was where the tapestries were. We couldn't remove the tapestries, so they had to just be carefully covered up with boarding as far up as we could. And obviously there have been splits that have appeared over the years. The split the Conservator found was at top of wardrobe height, so they would have been eating their chocolate, getting on the wardrobe, posting it down the split at the back and hiding the evidence, basically. What's really lovely is that they would have been from the first tuck boxes because they didn't have the war stamps on, so they were the very, very early girls that came up here. It would be lovely to talk to the old girls and find out who was the guilty culprit and tick them off, really. So we have a historical chocolate wrapper at Chatsworth, as well as the other collection of items. One of the things that I found fascinating about looking at the whole collection is that you can see what was popular and interesting to different generations as collectors. What gets me about tapestries is they may have fallen out of favour, they're often faded and slightly sad now, they're difficult things to house because they're so big, but you can't fake them. 
Those tapestries are so fine that the cost is prohibitive. Bearing in mind, you could have four weavers working on one of those for two years. So they become very special because if you lose them, that's it, they're gone forever.